first started, when did you actually found the Agape Church? This year, we're in our 30th year. 30th year. November of 1986 was my first public service for as Agape. So this is 30 years in November. What did you imagine when you started it? Did you see the, the vision as big as it is now? I, I think I felt it in my heart. Um, I started in my living room with a, a few people. And I uh, originated the vision process for us to begin to articulate what was trying to emerge at the time, not as a church, but as a, uh, a full-fledged community of um, rich diversity and rich inspiration and service and healing. And um, so I, I had the dreams, I had the prophetic dreams uh, that would let me see a part of it. And at that particular time, I think I was, um, the dream was bigger than who I thought I was. So I had to grow into it. And how was that process for you, for others who may be also having the calling and being and, and needing to grow into their calling as well? Well, it's, it's, it was twofold. It was one, uh, giving myself uh, full on permission to allow the energy that wanted to use me to come through and not be, not, not inhibit it in any way, just to let it happen and not try to fit it into a box or try to be like anyone else or to um, not try to uh, uh, do it as it should be done, you know, uh, but just to let it, let it unfold and, and let me be me and let the community be the community. And so that was one lesson, to just uh, uh, let the originality, you know, everyone, everyone is an original. There are no repeats. The, the, the universal presence never repeats itself, ever. It's infinite. And so, um, so I became adept at letting agape be agape and not be a copy of what someone thinks it should be. So that's, always, that's a very powerful lesson for everyone, particularly in the creative field, to, to not mimic or to copy, you need to be inspired by others, definitely, be encouraged by others, but never copy anyone. Just let yourself be yourself. And then uh, secondly, um, the great lesson was just in receiving uh, as I began to uh, grow more and more in the public side, because I'm a very private person, actually. I'm, I'm more of a, I'm more of a uh, contemplative. And uh, so then being able to receive all this energy that would come at me from time to time I had to grow into the acceptance of uh, uh, tremendous love for no reason at all. <laughs> you know, people just loving me, you know, and uh, and so that was that was a, that's an interesting journey. What is what are your thoughts about conscious cinema? About using this medium of, of film and video to uplift, transform, inspire? Well, that's the the reason for it. The conscious media, uh, the, the the medium of movies and uh, television. And um, it's for the purpose to, of upliftment, inspiration, transformation, education, uh, not, not just entertainment, even though it can be entertaining. The um, uh, more people go to movies and go to spiritual communities and yoga centers and things of that particular nature. So it has the capacity to shift consciousness rapidly. Uh, if it's done well, if it's done with quality and uh, good story, uh, an individual can come in and out of uh, this media and actually be transformed, or tremendous seeds can be planted for individuals to ruminate over later. So um, I think that uh, media, corporate media, is, a, is a, oftentimes a misuse of the technology. You know, uh, technology can be neutral. Uh, but the individuals that are, that are using it can use it to uplift and inspire, or they can use it to uh, maintain the status quo, or to keep people in a, in a box. And so uh, it's very important what's, what's emerging at our time in human history that people are actually considering uh, the use of uh, media to transform lives. It's, it's extremely important, and I'm glad to see that it's happening. You know, I've been a, a part of that dialogue for a long time. Do you have any particular projects that are near and dear to your heart right now? In terms of media projects or just projects, period? General, media and or? Well, um, I always feel like I'm just getting started. I, it's, very, it's only been like a year or two where I even considered 28, 29, 30 years of doing this. It's always been like today, <laughs> today. So I never really thought about it until it just crept up on me. 
So I feel like I'm just getting started with what I'm about to do. And so I've never had an edifice complex. And so I've always just wanted to build community and be able to um, uh, create an experiment of showing uh, people who just love to love uh, what can happen. And so that's been very successful. So now I'm, I'm, I'm open and receptive to the next leg of that, which is actually having a, a physical community um, with um, you know, the, 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 the sanctuary, with the schools, with the uh, restaurant, with the stores, with, you know, it has everything that you could find in any little city, you know, if you be right there to copy it, as a, creating a way of living. The project in Costa Rica is called Rhythmia. And uh, a man by the name of Jerry Powell, who attended Agape for some time, um, Agape changed his life. He had some addictive issues. He had some health challenges. And I assisted him. And he's taken the modalities that I shared with him and actually created a center in Costa Rica where a person can come in. And uh, so it's not just a vacation. It's actually a destination point for transformation. So you'll, you'll come in, get live blood cell analysis, you'll get a massage, mud, colonics. Um, my teachings are there, I send teachers down there every month, I go down there myself, and we help people integrate into who they are. They're, they're, they're legally, they can uh, do plant medicine there, mm -hmm. and so there's a shaman on site, and so they use um, plant medicine and they use my teachings to give people a context for what's happening and how to integrate their insights that they have so that the uh, plant medicine is not a one and done thing or entertainment or getting high or uh, fun. You could actually integrate the messages that you're getting. Now, everyone that goes there doesn't do plant medicine, but it's available. Uh, good food, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a place where a person can come in one day, leave in a week and actually see some changes in their life and in uh, how they think. It's very powerful. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Reverend, uh, you've been in the work, as you say, for 30 years. Are you seeing any sort of an acceleration in you know, the conscious awakening? Oh, the, the acceleration is, is phenomenal on so many levels. One, um, whenever um, the Earth goes around the sun and the sun goes through its solar system and the solar system goes through its particular universe or galaxy, there's, there's always a, a raising of frequency and vibration. This is now uh, proven scientifically. So there's a, the frequency of everything is higher. So things are rapid, much more manifestation is, is at, a, at an all-time high. So when you combine that with the fact that there are more people on the planet now, uh, percentage-wise, that are actually engaged in spiritual practice, um, there's a, a powerful field that's being created that's allowing people to catch you know, uh, their, their destiny to catch that there's something about them that's eternal, to catch something about them that's real. And so uh, we're, we're watching that occur. Now, uh, of course, mainstream media cannot uh, speak about that because they report from an old paradigm. So it, it's up to us to report from what's emerging. And uh, so, yeah, I see it. I see it everywhere I go, you mm -hmm. know, from little kids and millennials. Uh, old people who thought they would never change, <laughs> uh, having a significant uh, life changes and internal crisis in which they're coming back to uh, an awareness of their oneness with God without the clothes of their old religion or understanding the old religion was simply clothes, you know. So yeah, I see it. If there's one thing that you would leave with people that, that could be life-changing, a, a practice, a thought, a, a prayer, what would that be? Well, I think that uh, people oftentimes, uh, they, they don't know how important they are, how significant. Uh, they get lost in the quiet desperation of humanity. Uh, they get lost in the, uh, the ego's sense of protecting who they are and want to merely survive. And they don't understand um, just a little tiny bit of courage uh, to discover themselves, who they really are. Um, creates such a big wave in their life that they will discover that things start to just rush to their doorstep. They'll call it coincidence, they'll call it serendipity, they'll call it whatever. 
but just a little bit of, um, of movement towards self-awareness creates a big wave. And when they understand their significance, that this grand presence, which is never an absence, um, it never repeats itself, that they're so significant, so, so important, not to blow up their ego, but to blow up their vision of themselves. Uh, so I, I, I invite people to wake up every day, to put their feet on the ground, and to enter into a, a powerful state of gratitude, thanksgiving, for the next breath they're about to take, and then say in substance, what are my marching orders today? You know, and then be available for the quiet whisperings of the spirit to lead and guide and direct them into paths beyond the known. Because it's, the juice is in the unknown. The juice is in what we, we haven't seen yet. Because that's infinite. What we know is finite. How does it make you feel that um, you've affected so many people in so many different ways? You know, like even on a weekly basis in Agape, you know, there's new people that come in there all the time. And you really affect the masses. So how does that make you feel knowing that? You know, again, it's just... Um, it's just dawning on me, really. I, I see it, I'm there every week, I, I travel around the world, and I'm so, I've been so in the moment of just doing the work that I'm called to do, I never really thought about the effect of it until recently I'm seeing my students out here doing tremendous work, doing books and seminars and all manner of things, and now it's hitting me because my students are now out, and I'm seeing these kids who grew up in Agape coming back from uh, graduating from college, having kids, and then going off into uh, doing major things on the planet. And so I, I, I feel really good about it. I feel like, wow, you know, I, I made a difference. <laughs> and it's funny because you start, like, you know, it's not so much that you started with The Secret because you were far beyond that too, but it's like The Secret kind of catapulted so many people out, but it's been an evolution since that time. So it's like, you know, from that moment, which was, I don't even know how many years ago, but it just seems like it's been so long and, you know, things have evolved over time. Yeah, that, um, you know, I was, I, was in a, I was doing Agape for many years before that particular movie. And I was the last person to be in that movie, by the way. Um, Rhonda Byrne was flying from, um, I guess, Aspen. A lot of my friends were there at a, at a retreat that I couldn't attend. So I wasn't even in the movie. And she had to make a stop in Los Angeles to, before she flew to Australia. So she came to Agape. And after I finished speaking, she came up to me and she says, I, I never felt anything like this. Would you be in my movie? And I said, what, what is your movie? And she said, it's called The Secret. And I said, oh yeah, a lot of my friends are in that movie. Mm -hmm. And she said, can we film you? I said, sure. And I put up a green screen and uh, she started asking me some questions and then she said, you know, I, this is very different. Uh, I'm not going to ask you anything. Just talk. <laughs> and I just started talking. And uh, the next thing I know, a year later, I get this screener at home, and, and it's the movie. And I look at it. I said, wow, this is going to be pretty big. <laughs> I had no idea the impact of that. And basically, it, uh, it kind of outed me a little bit in many places where people didn't know who I was. You're a lovely being. Thank you so much for coming and shining your light and illuminate. And we're really happy to have you. It is absolutely my joy and my honor to be here. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.